a phenome, um, there's two ways of looking at it. One is from an analytical point of view, which is the sum of all the measurable physical and chemical parameters and properties that define biological subgroups. What that means is different diseases have got different flavours and different properties, and we try and measure those. Um, but from a philosophical point of view, it's where genes and environment meet together. So you have a genetic background uh, that you're born with, and your lifestyle um, and how you play your genes, if you like, as cards in a game of life throughout your life determine um, whether you get diseases and your likely responses to therapies for diseases. We appreciate that genetics is very important for understanding the reason why some people develop disease at certain stages and others don't. It's only a small part of the whole story. So our environment, and that our environment in its widest sense, that's food we eat, the chemicals that we are in common contact with every day, they really seem to play a role in causing some people to develop certain chronic diseases. And this is really, really important to understand. And this is really where we think the advances will be in our ability to detect these chemical responses by our body to various environmental challenges, such as the air that we breathe in a city like London, which we know is contaminated. Uh, is that responsible for a lot of people developing asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Well, by taking serial samples from individuals who live in cities like London, we hopefully will be able to detect those signals which we can then link to disease down the, the road. What it offers for the UK and possibly for the whole world is a new way of measuring metabolites and metabolic profiles of both general populations and also patients on a very large scale. So we can process potentially up to 100,000 samples a year from individuals um, where we're making measurements that will give us insight into their likelihood of getting disease, disease risk, and also if they have a disease already we can stratify them into the different disease subclasses and even use the technology to work out how effective the therapy is in individuals. So a, a wide range of applications for the same technology. The partners are the Medical Research Council, the National Institute of Health Research, um, who are primary funders for this, and also the big companies, the manufacturing companies that build the instrumentation that you need to make these measurements. So that's the Waters Corporation and Brooker Biospin. The technologies we use are mass spectrometry and nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. And the reason that those are the ones of choice is because they give information on hundreds or thousands of metabolites, compounds, in a single analytical run. So they give you a big bang for your buck. Right, one run, lots of information covering a huge amount of metabolic physiological ground. The data analysis and computational modelling are one of the mainstays of the Phenome Centre and we need advanced mathematical methods for taking the spectra as they come off the, the analytical equipment and converting them in some, into something that clinicians or epidemiologists can readily recognise, so relating to either diagnosis of disease or perhaps risk for disease or even prognosis of disease. The Phenome Centre is going to be different from the other centres around the world by its sheer size and audacity. Uh, what we're going to do is really take this science to an industrial level. And the diseases that we're talking about are the, the big killers which we all know about. It's cardiovascular disease, it's cancer, it's diabetes, yeah, it's, it's, these, uh, it's these conditions which really are draining our NHS resources. So the hope is that if we understand why these diseases develop, then instead of treating them, we can actually eventually prevent them, or at least reduce the incidence of them.